Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com. Today is a battle of titans, and we're here to report on the results. The LG G4 versus the Samsung S95D. It doesn't get much more high-end than this. But which titan will come out on top? In this comparison, we'll tackle design, HDR brightness, reflections, color gamut, volume, accuracy, image processing, input specifications, and audio pass-through. So let's go! From the front, little separates the two. The race towards having the slimmest bezels possible makes for extremely sleek looking TVs. It also kind of makes them all look similar. Still, the S95D does have a slightly thicker bottom bezel than the G4, so at least there's that minor distinction. If you're using their respective stands, that's going to be the primary visual difference between them. Note that only the 55 and 65 inch models of the G4 come with a stand. The bigger sizes instead come with the traditional G series slim wall mount. Overall, they just both look extremely premium. Most of their differences are on their backs. They look good with a textured back that feels premium to the touch. Both TVs are also entirely flat with no bulge near the bottom for the inputs. On the LG, the inputs are instead recessed into the TV. On the Samsung, all of the inputs are on the external One Connect box. The only input on the TV proper is the big one for the One Connect box. Oh, and a USB port. The One Connect box, or OCB, is extremely versatile. It slots onto the TV stand, but more importantly, you can place it away from the TV using the included cables. Combined with the TV's flat back, this lets you install the TV completely flush to the wall, with easy access to your inputs thanks to the OCB. The LG also sits completely flush on the wall if you have it wall mounted, but you won't be able to easily access its inputs, so that's something to keep in mind. Thankfully, if you use the slim wall mount, it's made to let you easily pull the TV away from the wall if you want to. So with that mount, it's not too much of a hassle to plug in a few cables and push it back so it's flush against the wall again. Cables on the G4 also come out the bottom, so they're easy to tidy up with a sleeve. If you're instead using the stand, you can route cables through it as well, which is a nice touch. Both TVs have four HDMI ports that are capable of up to 4K at 144Hz. For LG, this is new, since previous G series TVs were limited to 120Hz. The LG is also the only of the two TVs to use the full 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, as the Samsung's One Connect box is limited to 40 gigabits per second. This shouldn't cause you any issues, as 40 gigabits per second is fast enough for 4K at 144Hz with HDR, but it's something to note. Both TVs support all VRR technologies, but only the G4 is officially certified as G-Sync compatible, although the Samsung still works just fine with G-Sync. Both TVs have an eARC port that passes through advanced audio formats, but the G4 has an edge here since it also passes through DTS audio formats. These are often used by physical media for their audio tracks, so without DTS, you usually don't have access to the best possible sound from your physical media collection. Another thing that the G4 has that the S95D doesn't is Dolby Vision. For TVs this bright, the advantages of Dolby Vision, namely dynamic metadata that adjusts the picture based on the display's capabilities, don't matter as much. They're still nice to have, absolutely, but it's not as much of a must as it is on OLEDs with lower levels of brightness. Plus, some content is better optimized for Dolby Vision, so it can be hit or miss depending on what you like to watch. As for Samsung, they're sticking with the less popular HDR10 Plus format. Ultimately, both TVs will look stellar when watching HDR content. We just alluded to performance, but now let's dive in deep, starting with HDR brightness. These are some seriously bright OLEDs. They're both capable of way over a thousand nits, which is very bright indeed. The G4 uses a micro lens array, or MLA layer, to push itself to ludicrous heights. The way MLA works is simple. It acts as a focusing layer. Instead of having the OLED elements work even harder to output light, which would increase the chance of burn-in, the G4 has a ton of very tiny lenses in front of its OLED panel, which then focus the light without overexerting the elements. It works wonders for the G4 and the G3, but still, the S95D one-ups it in many of our test slides. Frankly, the S95D would be the brighter of the two if it weren't for its aggressive thermal throttling. 
After one minute on a sustained 10% white window, the S95D reaches about 75 degrees Celsius, or about 167 degrees Fahrenheit. The TV then aggressively thermal throttles itself from its 10% peak of 1635 nits, all the way down to 193 nits. Inversely, the G4 is remarkably consistent, as its sustained values are barely lower than its peaks. But for real-life content, this likely isn't going to be an issue, as real content is more varied than our test patterns. Still, the LG outperforms the Samsung in two out of three real scene brightness tests, which serve to mimic real content. Ultimately, the G4's consistency gives it a slight edge in brightness, but the S95D can reach higher peaks. Just as a note, the 97-inch model of the G4 doesn't have an MLA layer, so it won't be nearly as bright as the smaller sizes. Oh, and some other good news, neither TV loses much brightness when in game mode. The Samsung is slightly overbrightened instead. And if you're curious about SDR brightness, they're very close, with the G4 having a very slight edge over the S95D, again due to its consistency. The S95D hits higher peaks than the G4, but its ABL is way more aggressive, leading to more important variations in brightness. The LG G4 is incredibly colorful. It looks amazing, and anyone looking at it will go, wow, this TV is so vibrant and lovely. I just love it so much. It's just that the S95D is even more colorful due to its QD OLED panel, which uses quantum dot technology to make brighter and more vivid colors. The LG, on the other hand, uses a traditional OLED panel, the key difference being that W. OLED panels have a white subpixel, which helps boost the brightness at the cost of saturation for brighter colors. QD OLED panels instead use RGB subpixels with a quantum dot filter, resulting in more vibrant colors on QD OLED panels than on OLED panels. It's noticeable when both TVs are next to each other. But that isn't to say the colors on the G4 aren't excellent. They just aren't as excellent as they are on the Samsung. The Samsung even has a color booster feature that oversaturates colors while doing a surprisingly good job of maintaining accuracy. The S95D also has superior color volume, as it's capable of showing far brighter colors than the G4 can. It's fair to say that if colors are your thing, then the S95D is the TV for you. But the G4 is still an incredibly vibrant TV. The G4 is less colorful than the S95D, sure but it's significantly more accurate in SDR out of the box. The G4 is so accurate that even purists can forego calibrating it. It's that good. The S95D is good, sure, and most people will be satisfied with it, but it leans too cold even with its color temperature setting set to warm too, and its whites and cyans lean too blue. Still, it's good enough to satisfy most people. Purists, however, will not be satisfied, and they'll need to have it calibrated so this is a clear win for the LG. These two TVs use dramatically different screen finishes. The LG G4 uses a traditional glossy screen finish. For the S95D, Samsung instead opted for a matte screen finish. The matte coating of the S95D is better in some ways than a traditional glossy coating, but worse than others. In most instances, the matte coating does eliminate reflections, but it does so by diffusing the light across the screen rather than just reducing the size of the reflection like a glossy coating does. In doing so, it ends up negatively impacting the TV's contrast. Inversely, the G4 does an incredible job of reducing the size of any reflections without impacting contrast. Reflections do look pink on the G4, but it's minor. Ultimately, the matte coating on the S95D is subjective, and you'll have to decide for yourself if you like it or not. It's hard to argue for it when the glossy coating on the G4 is so good, though. When it comes to image processing, the two TVs trade blows, but ultimately the G4 has no real weaknesses, and it comes out on top. Especially when it comes to low-quality content smoothing. LG has been working extremely hard on its image processing these past few years, and their low-quality content smoothing is now truly excellent. There's basically no macro blocking of any kind to be seen, and the details are preserved very well. The S95D, in comparison, does a decent job here, but there's noticeable macro blocking in dark scenes. So if you like to watch a lot of low bitrate content from streaming services, then go for the LG. When it comes to upscaling low-resolution content, they're both great. Details are upscaled well on both TVs, even if some finer details are hard to make out. 
The Samsung has the edge over the LG when it comes to HDR native gradient handling. The Samsung is fantastic with barely any noticeable banding in any color gradient. The LG G4 is great too, but there's noticeable banding in dark grays. Still, the LG is impressive enough that you won't notice any excessive banding, but the S95D is clearly better here. But which one of these is better overall? LG came back with a vengeance this year, and as of right now, the G4 is at the top of the list when it comes to the best TVs released this year. LG fixed many of the issues that the G3 had. For example, the G4 barely loses any brightness in game optimizer mode. It's capable of 4K at 144Hz on all of its HDMI ports, and the smaller sizes of the TV come with a stand. Still, the S95D is no slouch, as it has the edge in its color gamut, and it would have had the edge in brightness if it wasn't severely throttling itself. And of course, it has its one connect box, which makes it way easier to deal with any inputs when the TV is flush against the wall. The G4 is a bit better overall, but the S95D certainly has a few crucial advantages up its sleeve. A possible alternative to these two TVs is the even more expensive Sony A95L, last year's best TV. It still has some advantages over the G4, such as a wider color gamut and slightly better image processing, and still, it's only worth it for home theater enthusiasts with funds to spare, as the G4 is almost as good for movies at a lower price. For gaming, both the G4 and the S95D have the edge over the Sony, as the Sony loses quite a bit of brightness in game mode, and it's limited to 4K at 120Hz on two HDMI 2.1 ports. Plus, it has a higher input lag than its competitors. If you're looking at these models and thinking, geez, they sure look amazing, but I just don't have that kind of cash lying around, then don't worry, you're not alone. Thankfully, there's the Samsung S90D. It's still expensive, but not nearly as much as all three previously mentioned models. And frankly, it performs almost just as well. It's bright, colorful, and has amazing gaming performance. Like the S95D, it doesn't have outstanding image processing, it doesn't support Dolby Vision or DTS audio formats, and it doesn't have a One Connect box. But aside from that, it has everything else. It's our value recommendation. Well, that's all for our comparison between the LG G4 and the Samsung S95D. If you want to learn more, check out the full reviews on our website, or use our comparison tool to look at the TVs side by side. The links are in the description below. Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. The Samsung has the edge over LG here, as the S95D's LG fixed many of the issues that the G3 had, like the Oh, that's a good issue. Yeah, that's yeah, a great I'm issue. I'm happy they fixed that issue. Me too. <laughs>